Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of We Hunt Together. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, the fact of the matter is, um, once again, this episode, doing what I love that this show kind of does, it has like these moments between the characters, like obviously Freddy and Baba's, you know, relationship as well as um, Lola and uh, Jackson. Uh, for one, it's like that whole moment between uh, Freddy and Baba where it's like they're eating the donuts and stuff like that. Once again, it's like, oh, like all this sweet stuff between us before we talk about murdering somebody. It's just, I think it's so interesting. I mean, once again, it kind of feeds into the whole Bonnie and Clyde aspect too. It's like, oh, we're so sweet and we're so in love, but then we also have like this like heinous crime shit that we do. But it's like, she was telling that story of like, okay, like try to eat the donut without like licking your lips. Afterwards, she's like, it's so, it, it teaches you restraint and stuff like that. It's a little game that she played with her dad and Baba was like, I can do it. And He's puckering his lips, and it's so hard not to do it. And she's like, see, it's so hard. She's like, so I did it one time. But anytime I would fail to um, not uh, fail that, my dad would make me stop, put the donut down that I was eating. I couldn't finish it. So what she did, she stuffed it all in her mouth, and her dad's punishment for her doing that is making her eat six other jam donuts back to back. And it's like, even Baba's looking like, oh, that's that's mad fucked up, which it is, you know, which kind of plays into, like, I guess, like, you know, like, the fact of the matter is she didn't have the best childhood, I'm assuming. But then it's like, she's like, yeah, um, he's like, because Baba's like, that must have made you sick. She was like, yeah, but it, I had just enough time that I can throw up in his bed, and Baba's like, oh. Freddy and puts down the donut because he's just kind of like uh, I lost my appetite a little bit but it's like once again it's just like it's, it's like oh it's sweet and fun and then immediately to how are we going to get to uh, Kian and it's like alright I got that figured out um and then, like, the homeowners or the people who bought the house, are there, they're scrambling. And it's like, once again, if you didn't have the context of them being serial killers, man, oh, man, would this be kind of a sweet moment. And that, once again, it plays into that, like I said earlier, Bonnie and Clyde element, too. But it's just like, Freddie's trying to stop herself from, like, laughing or whatever. And um, and at one point, she's acting like she's about to sneeze and Babini covers her mouth and she's just laughing because I guess she was faking it or whatever. But then they end up sneaking out. And as they're leaving, she's whooping. He's like, this is not the time for whooping. Um, so at the same time that's happening, obviously Lola and Jackson see Darren's body, which obviously I guess, you know, Jackson's still new to the homicide unit. So it's like seeing the body like that, you can tell it's messing with because even Lola's looking at him like, oh, like you seem like you're about to throw up, I guess. like, Because we never fully saw what Darren's body looks like. I mean, I, I, I'm fine with that, but you know, but it's just like, it looks like, because apparently they couldn't tell from facial recognition because they're actually going to go nationwide with it. The people, the cops, they found his body, but it's like, oh, you guys came up. And so they searched the area, but obviously like Lola and um, Jackson want to do another sweep themselves with the context of what they know now. And so... They go looking and they come across the family that um, Lola, that uh, no, that um, B uh, Baba is connected to. And so that starts connecting. I love when they went up to the door and everything. Jackson is looking at her and she's got, she kind of scowls at him. She's almost like, what? He's like, what'd you get up to last night? And it, once again, I think this is the amazing thing about, it's just like the actress who plays, um, Lola, she does this amazing thing where she kind of gets like wide-eyed and doe-eyed and she just kind of like, her eyebrows raise up and she kind of looks to the side. She's like, you know, sad about. Eight nachos. Like, but she was quiet for a good like five seconds before she said anything. Because obviously he's worried about, you know, whether she's getting hired. And just, she even said, try not to overdose. And it's just like, that's what I mean. The re that's I keep saying it every episode. I love the reports. Just like little moments like that. I'm like, I love that. It's just just her her facial reaction to just looking to the side, her eyebrows raised, her eyes open wide. It's just it. I don't know. I loved it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, at the same time, they're at the church. Uh, that um, uh, Freddie and Bob are at the church. They're looking for clothes and stuff. Like once again, they're they're running like. Oh, young kids in love. It's like, oh, race you. Ha ha. They go pick up some clothes, but Baba starts breaking down and crying. And, you know, and Freddie's like, why, why are you crying, Baba? Because it's like, I think for him, it's just like everything's just hitting him all at once because it's just kind of like, ah, oh, dude, this is all, you know, because I think it's that thing of like, yeah, 
it, like he's able to push a lot of it out of his mind for now, but all of this kind of brought it back to him, and it's just kind of like a, it just it starts hitting him, you know? Because remember, Baba's whole thing is he wanted to be a better person. I mean, truth be told, this all he started all of this with the best of intentions. The whole Simon situation, he was defending Freddy, but you know, obviously it spiraled out from there, you know. Um, and obviously, at the same time, you know, Lola and Jackson are questioning the family that took in Baba. We kind of, they're like, all right, they didn't want to because they, they they don't want Baba to get in trouble because they know he's a good person. But at the same time, it's a situation of. At the same time, we're kind of hearing the story about what happened to him when he was younger. Basically, the rebels that came to his home put a gun in his brother's hand. It's like, all right shoot one, either your mother or your father. His brother refused. They killed his brother, handed the gun to, to, um, to Baba. The fact is Baba's alive means he chose one of them. And I'm assuming, I'm assuming he chose his father. I could be mistaken, but I just, that he never actually gives you an answer. And I'm surprised Freddie didn't ask. I guess because Freddie knew it would probably come off super effed up if she did. But then Baba says a line I thought was interesting. He was like, do not ask me to kill this guy. And Freddie's like, what? Of course I'm not going to ask. He's like, please do not ask me. For him, it's like, I've literally got so much blood on my hand just from my past alone. But even just from the time we've been together, I have so much blood on my hands. Don't ask me to kill him another person and she's like I'm not we're just gonna scare him a little bit and I was like I don't know if I believe you I feel like you're gonna want him to, you know so she's like I just want uh to kind of scare him get him by the river and scare the truth out of him so they put on a mask and everything they're you know it's like a Halloween thing so they're dressed up and everything but then Baba pulls her away at one point as they were getting closer to school it's like okay so She's like, he's basically, her story doesn't make any sense because he's like, if you, if he was chasing after you behind the hallway and you pushed him down the stairs, would he, his back be towards the hall instead of the stairs? Then on top of that, two students said that he, that you did it on purpose. And she's like, they're, he had them lie for it. But it's like, why? One, sure, but two people lying? Like, what would they gain from lying about that, you know? So her story's kind of unraveling a little bit, but she's like, you know, convincing Baba, like, you know, this is about stopping him, you know, so, and it turns out, like, you know, they were able to lure him away by themselves and everything, and, uh, Ken, when, um, he's alone with Freddie, or rather, Lily, he recognizes her, he admits, like, yesterday he didn't recognize her, but for, she's all asking all these questions, though, she's like, out of anyone Everyone always asks me why I did it except for you. And he was like, basically, he'd been through so much because of everything. Crawling from the dark, keeping himself from getting engulfed by the darkness. But he's like, I couldn't bring myself. Because basically, he wanted to leave that in the past. Because he'd already been drowning in so much anger and everything. So it's like, his life is better. He's better off. And so it's like a thing of like, I didn't want to hold on to that anger. He's like, so I forgive you. And the moment he said that, I was like, I knew the words that were going to come out of her mouth were going to be, you forgive me, huh? You know, and even he kind of says that to a certain extent, like, oh, I'm so glad that you forgive me. And so it's a situation of like, because once again, it's what I brought up last episode. I, it's hard to say what was the truth because I had from the very beginning, I had, I was like, Freddie killed her friend. Well, Lily killed Frederica, hands down. I, I figured that out, but I didn't know the context of Kian, whether he did do something to Freddie and um, Lily or not. I kind of had a feeling like he, well, Frederica, but I don't, I don't, I had a feeling he didn't do anything to him, but at the same time, I was like, I don't know. So it was, it was always going to be the thing of, did he do something and he was guilty regardless or was it a thing of you know it wasn't you know was Freddie lying again you know because she's done that so obviously Freddie ends up knocking him out they end up taking him to the river because Lola ends up calling and I love Freddie picks up the phone because she's like Ken Fitzgerald and then she's got a smile on her face and then Lola the camera kind of turns and Lola kind of turns with it and it goes Freddie, that smile on Freddie's face come quickly disappear because it's like shit, you know, because uh, they were trying to warn Kim because they knew because I'm skipping over a lot of stuff, but obviously like Jackson went to see their boss about like yeah okay so secretly we've been keep we've been keeping up with this Freddie case and she's just looking like what because he was like you know ma'am you know I respect you and everything she's like all right get on with it what have you done it's like actually we haven't actually closed that case you you what. So it's like, okay, we think there's other connections to it, but obviously uh, she gave them leeway with a lot of stuff. So, 
and obviously they ended up figuring out where the last car, uh, last time their last place their car was, and it turns out, um, it turns out it was near the school. I'd actually also skipped over another good important scene. Was kind of interesting, like, um, Jackson is talking to his wife. He's like, no, I'm not going to get my mom to be, because she's not a babysitter. He's like, you take fucking responsibility for what? And Lil, um, Lola's over there listening to this, and Jackson's kind of, and she's like, they're wait, ready for us to go in. And, and he was kind of waving off. He's like, I'm sorry, yo, that you, uh, yeah. Once again, it's what Lola brought up last episode. That anger of yours is going to come out one way or another, so you need to deal with it, because you haven't been dealing with it. You're just waiting for your wife to say something. You know, It's like, you need to confront her about it, because obviously you're just going to be building up more and more anger the entire time, so you kind of, you know, erupt. But, um, it was even interesting because Jackson was like, how about I handle things on this front, you know, because he's like, you know, maybe if I talk, you know, kind of put on that Jackson charm, you know, because basically he's saying like Lola can come off a little, Bruh. you know, so he's kind of like, you know, maybe, and she's like, fine. And he's like, good, good, good. And he ended up finding Darren's, um, Darren's uh, license in the Bible. I thought it was interesting specifically that Lola noted like, the quote or whatever it was like I'm gonna butcher it it was almost like basically it was almost like saving someone's life to save your life you know and I think that that holds true for Baba because because once again he's still under the impression Darren's alive and fine uh but you know obviously him and we as the audience as well as everyone else including Lily uh Frederica Freddie uh, knows that that's not true, that he's dead, you know, once again, Bob is the only one that's still in the dark about it, and, uh, Freddie has no intention of, uh, revealing that to him, I'm sure, he already has a guilty enough conscience, like, if he finds out, like, you know, it's like, you know, not only was he, you know, the cosmic irony behind you letting him live and him getting hit by a truck, but also at the same time, it's like, I'm sure he's not going to appreciate the fact that Lily hasn't told, Freddie hasn't told him the entire time. So there's that. But I, I'm wondering, like, Jackson kind of looks to the side when, you know, uh, Lola was saying that. So I'm wondering either he was thinking, like, maybe that passage means something to Baba, or the fact is that Lola specifically knew that, kind of, like, took note of that. Because I think, you know, in a very similar vein, like, you know, there's there's a comparison between Lola and Baba. What Baba went through, in the very least, like, you know, what we learned about Lola last episode. I think, like, maybe that particular passage from Luke, it, 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 it um, resonated to a certain extent, maybe. But uh, regardless, uh, they take uh, Kian out there, and obviously Freddie makes a point to kind of confront him about everything. And obviously he's very adamantly denying it. But you can't 100% take that in the truth, you know, face value because there's plenty of people who never, even in a life and death situation, would never admit their guilt. But you can tell Baba was starting to wonder whether or not Freddie had gotten it all wrong. He And it starts turning into an interesting thing where he admits, like, yes, like, I got a little too close to my students. He's like, in a sense, that like, nothing ever happened between me and Freddie. Uh, Frederica or you Lily like nothing ever happened the fact of the matter is yes did I do uh, it's not wrong that I care too much but basically with the context of everything today he's like basically I wouldn't do what I did in the past it's like I never did anything but he's like with the way the world like obviously the world is filled with sick people I would never want in a sense of like like people who take advantage of uh, children and stuff like that so for him it's like I wouldn't want my actions to be misconstrued as uh, pedophilic or anything. So I think that's what he was trying to get across. But, like, I was only there to comfort the kids. Like, I, I treated them like friends. You know, it's like, well, that's why I was always kind of like, I could see where someone could you easily get the wrong idea. It's just basically like he came off, he could come off a little uh, creepy in the context of things. But it's like, out of context, I'm sure, you know, it's even worse. But it's like... But now it's a situation of like, it's like, oh, the pills and stuff. She was like, she had a kidney issue. And it's like, the attention I gave her, it's like, okay, she lost her dad before she came here. So she told me she loved me. And it's like, I, what should I do? Was I supposed to just say no? He's like, I couldn't break her heart. She lost her dad and she needed someone to kind of fill that void. So he's like, I said, I love you. And Lily's like, oh, you sneaking into a room. It's like, wait, did you see me actually do this? At the end of the day, it's like, what is your single piece of evidence? And then, you know... Um, Freddie, it's like, Baba, don't believe him. Don't tell me you're starting to believe him. And he's grabbing her and being like, tell me you're sure. You, I, I, we will not do anything until you are absolutely sure, Freddie. You know? 
And obviously that I, you can tell that hurts her because it's like after everything they've been through. And I think that's the interesting element of that chunk of the episode. The honeymoon phase is over, you know? And so it's a situation of like, because it's becoming an unraveling situation because I think now even, and now it's put things in an interesting perspective that Lily wasn't, I keep doing that, Freddie wasn't lying. It's just her mind was skewed a certain way because basically it's like, oh, that ring you gave her, the ring, the ring. It's like, you're going to take her off to a far, far away in Tall Castle. It's like, it was a part of a play that she was in. And it's like, everything was something. But then once again, you still can't hundred percent believe it because he could still be lying, but he seemed adamant about his innocence. He was just like, she's like, did you love her? He was like, no, did you ever love me? And she was, he was like, no, I cared for all of you, but you know, but Freddie was so sure because of everything that she was just kind of like, you know what? Bump that. You know, she's getting pissed at Baba. Like, give me a fucking minute to figure this all out. And she was, you know. And then she tells the story of, do you know, um, you know, a baby, a child and a baby are in the tub. The whole thing she brought up to Baba before. And it's like, and who's to blame? And she's like, you know what you should really take away from the story? not being the baby in that situation and then she pushes him into the water and it's like it's okay she's like it's okay like you know the suicide thing is gonna work he's like no it's not gonna baba's like it's not gonna work because his hands are still tied and she's like shit and baba's like you've damned us at the same time the police are closing in you know so they have to run i'm surprised baba didn't jump in to save him because the whole thing lily was trying to get across was like you don't do this for me. This isn't about me. This is about all the other innocent children that have been victims of his or could be potential future victims. So, but you know, as they're making their escape, Freddie has to rest because she tripped and hurt her leg. And, um, she remembers that particular scene where she was like, in her mind, it's like, oh, he's reading a book to her arm around her. And, um, she had walked in. That's what she had seen, remembered before when she went into the dormitory, you know, present day. But now looking back on it, he was sitting in a chair. They weren't sitting side by side when he was reading to her. So her mind as a little girl, skew, I mean, it's been over like a decade. So obviously your memory is going to be a little skewed. Plus you were a little girl at the time. You were actually in love with Ken. So you saw what you wanted to see. And so over the years, your mind warped it. I mean, that's the ultimate interesting thing about memory. And I've talked about this in other things, how people say your memories are actually memories of memory. So that's why your memory is always skewed. Like you will remember it the first time a certain way, but over the years when you try to remember, uh, uh, reminisce about something you're remembering the memory of you remembering something so it's it's almost this interesting layer so that's why things get so skewed over the years because you're not remembering the original thing you're remembering what you remembered you know it, it's it's an interesting thing that like I I heard one time that I thought that was such a, like a fascinating thing about memory so but once again it's just like how she felt plus she was a little girl plus it's been 10 years her memory of them and it's got skewed so it's like so Ken never did do anything nothing to Freddie I mean to Frederica or Lily, at least that we're aware of. So it's like she did kill an innocent person. I mean, it also seems like in retrospect, because obviously we did get to see the scene of like she did kill uh, Frederica because it, it was an accident. It wasn't 100% on purpose. And obviously it's just kind of like she got scared. So, um, but I think it was a thing of she did push. Um, him down the stairs because I guess because of her own guilt. It's like the reason why we were fighting in the first place is because you confused me. I thought you loved me because she had even told Baba like she, uh, Ken made her feel like the entire school was built for her. Like she felt like she was special. I mean, you know, probably wasn't feeling special in her own life, you know, and everything. But it's like when it came to him, she felt special. And so for Frederica to be getting all this attention, him treating you special. It's like, no, I want the ring. He, I'm, I'm in love with him. Because she had confessed that to um, Freddie. But like, but that also makes you think like Freddie, because that also shows in itself too that Freddie lied. But she concocted this narrative of what she already felt. You know, she already felt like, oh, you were close to her anyway. But to kind of justify, I think in her mind, to justify what she did when she was younger to both, you know, him and to Frederica, Lily had to like concoct this in her mind of like but once again you've been you tell yourself something over and over again for a decade it becomes your truth it's no longer like something you made up it's like whether it was something you 
that got twisted in your mind because of everything, because of trauma or whatever, or whether it's just simply because um, you you you, just, you know you tell a lie. Like I said, you tell a lie long enough, it eventually becomes the truth, whether it's an intentional lie or whether it's just like a subconscious lie, you know. But um, either way, it puts that whole situation in perspective. Uh, but I don't think this one is as bad as the others. Like like I said, I think legit. It's hard to say because it seems more like. She was in love with him, and he didn't respond the way she wanted him to. And it, once again, it, it seems like this has kind of been Freddie's thing ever since she was little. She wants what she wants, you know? And it's like, she takes what she wants. She wanted that ring, so she tried to take it from Frederica, and she ended up falling in the water, you know? Once again, she was a little girl. It was an accident, you know? So, but I guess that's, once again, I'm chalking it up to that's why she killed, well, try to push kid. Well, not try. She did push Ken down the stairs. It's because it's like, oh, you were supposed to be with me. And I heard about, you know, now that I found out that you were treating Frederica special. Like, that's what that was about. I, I chalked that up to that. Because like, when she walked up to him last episode, she was smiling like, oh, you remember? But it's hard to say whether it's just kind of like, oh, I want you to remember it's me. But it's like she was hurt because he didn't remember. Because she, you know, whether it's because of the lie she had told herself or what he had done to her and Freddie, Frederica... Or whether it was just because it's like I loved you and I thought something was special between us, but I'm just a nobody to you type of thing, you know? So all that's going down. Um, obviously, you know, Baba's like, he's going to go to Morocco because that's where Pascal's got a place. And she's like, you know, but what about me? He's like, you don't want to go to Morocco with me. She's like, yeah, I do. So it seems like he's going to take her along. Now, if they, even if they manage to somehow get out of the country, that's going to be interesting. Uh, because remember what Baba said, like, Pascal, Pascal was his first love, too, you know? So that's definitely going to be an interesting thing. Like, if they are around each other, like, how will Freddie react? Because Baba is hers and no one else. Because obviously the relationship has a bit of a wrench in it because of this whole Ken thing. It, it, it's, like I said, the honeymoon phase is kind of over. I do love at the same time, there's a whole situation where Jackson and Lola, obviously Lola's talking to that officer about, you know, getting past blocked off. And obviously he's pissed off enough to be like, damn it, lady, if you want the roadblock set up yourself, either you give me the manpower, you do it your damn self. And she's like, and Lola's the type to kind of snap on someone, but she's like, okay, fine, we'll do it. But then Jackson kind of stops her. It's like, we'll wait for reinforce the cavalry to come in. You know, that's a better way to her time. And she's like, well, since we got a couple minutes, she pulls out the plant and gives it to Jackson. He's like, what? She's like, I didn't pay for it or anything. And he's like, I've never received a plant before. She's like, geez, Jackson, if I knew you were going to cry about it, I wouldn't have gotten it. And it was like a very sweet moment. I was like, oh, that's super sweet. Once again, they're dynamic. Uh, but obviously they end up finding, finding Kian's body. Uh, Baba and Freddie on the run. Johnny lives close enough by, so Freddie's giving the story trying to get Johnny. She's like, oh yeah, I went to visit the river, kind of got lost. Can I borrow your truck? He's like, no, I could drop you. She's like, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm going to turn it in like a day or so. And he's like, come on, Freddie. Uh, hey, where's that bloke that was with you yesterday? And she's talking over him, trying to turn skew the conversation. Grabs the key. They're about to bounce. And out comes Johnny with a gun. And the moment Johnny, Johnny got in front of the car, I'm like, uh, they're going to run you over, aren't they? I was like, oh, that's, that's going to suck. That's going to suck big time. I hope we don't find ourselves in a situation where Bob is like, you know what? I remember what Darren's address is. Let's go check on him. And then but then you have Lily probably be like, I keep doing that. I keep wanting to call her by your real name. Freddie is going to be like, oh, no, 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 we shouldn't do that. Just going to draw too much attention. They know, like, I'm, I'm curious because eventually Baba's going to have, like, as I've brought it up since the beginning, like, Baba's going to eventually find out the truth about the Darian thing. I'm just curious what the context of everything is going to be when he finds out, like, oh, you actually did have a kid that's sick, so Freddie was wrong about that. And, wait, Darren's not back. He died. What? Huh? Wait, you knew Freddie? Or Freddie could lie and be like, oh, I didn't know. Oh, that's so sad. He got hit. Wait, it was near where we were. Huh? Wait, I don't, you know, so that things could start unraveling on that part as well. Like a, a lot of interesting things, dude. I'm so curious to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.